Hi, it's Jeff from RV Diagnostics. We're getting ready to go over a uh, water heater gas valve assembly where we can replace just the solenoids, okay? A lot of you are buying these gas valves from $80 to $90 and you get these two solenoid windings. Here, I'll turn. Like $35 for two of them. That's the part number. All right, DC valve replacement, 3100 series. All right, right there they are. They should ohm out about 20 ohms a piece, okay? Well, here's the gas valve assembly right there. It should be familiar to you. It sets like this, basically, into the water tank. All right, right there's your igniter. All right, there's the eighth-inch gap. This here helps the flame go up this way a little bit because this becomes a... This part of the igniter becomes a flame detector sensor. The temperature goes back and changes the DSI board, direct spark ignition board, okay? There you go, right there. All right, so we're going to put you on hold. I'm going to set up. Here's your multimeter, all right? There's two different ranges I would use, okay? One is 200 ohms, one is 2,000. I'm going to show you the difference between the two. Let's start off at 200. The back light's on. The leads are apart, that's why you have a one, or open. I'll put the leads together. And the leads themselves equal, here we got a little bit of dirt. Okay, the, the leads together themselves equals 0.6 of ohm. So I will subtract that basically from anything. Because sometimes you're out there and one lead will mess up and you got to replace it with another. So you need to know how many ohms the meter seeing just on your leads. Now this one here, I got a permanently ground alligator clip. I have another banana jack, right? Or I can go through here on the side and go through here with another one because I do multiple testing. So I would put it right where that ground is, okay? Now, I'm going to go to the red lead, which comes off the board, feeding the GV gas valve. All right, and this is how you measure them, and they should equal about 20 ohms. All right, so we subtract that 0.9 from where we got 21. Well, the gas valves are good. The solenoid windings are good. Don't mean the mechanical part is good. Let's say they were bad, though. It doesn't matter which one was bad. You replace them in a set. That's up to you. You can replace one. With me, I replace both of them. Put you on hold, and I'm going to show you how to do it. What I'm going to do is disconnect the positive to positive, and the negative is negative because the negative is right here. You know, technically, I would take this off. That's a Torx. I would clean that ground up a little bit. All right. But the idea of this video is to show you how to replace these solenoids. It's a simple procedure. You're not messing with the diaphragm assembly down below because they won't let you unless you have other tools. All right. Put you on pause. All right. These little screws I took out, Phillips. All right. They came right out of here there and there okay that whole system will lift up the bracket notice what it says oh, let me see if I can get it do not grip you ain't supposed to grab at twist it and all that all right so there they are watch how easy these windings come up just that easy so I'll put you on pause again I'm gonna disconnect the ground wires and then the positives well, folks, you can tell that these are original. Look at that. It's soldered. So I would take each one of these off and then put crimp connectors on them. Personally, I would solder them back on. It's what I do. But you would use crimp connectors. You just lift these up all the way off. All right. Now, if you don't mess with these torques and they're tamper-proof, see the little thing in the center, little post? All right. You won't get to the diaphragm assembly underneath all you do is change these out right there put that one on there notice a little locking tab put you on pause because i gotta get another one out of that bag there you go got them in there all right you put back the holder lock them down see the little right there and then we would put our wires back okay so the ground would go in the center doesn't really matter you can put the ground here on one and four and the positive on two and feet, four, three. They're non-polarity. All right. Now, how do you put it back on? You put your screws back in here. 
and the job is done. Folks, that's how simple it is. Once you test those out and they're bad, you just replace them for like $35 for a set of them. All right. If you hear them clicking, they're redundant. There's two of them for a reason. Both of them got a flow. All right. It's a safety device. Thank you. This is Jeff from RV Diagnostic. What's the motto? You're right. Test, not guess. The other one is what? Safe travels. I mean, you can't fire as burn bright till we meet again. Whether it be on a YouTube channel video like here, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, put a comment in there. Hey, you don't know what you're doing. Hey, you know what you're doing. I'll answer, folks, believe it or not. And the other one is, might see you on the road, might see you on the campground. What is it? Safe travels. I mean, you can't fire burn bright till I see you again, whether on here campground on the road or at a filling station. Thank you very much. This is Jeff from RV Diagnostics.